Hello everyone, my name is Norman Moreno and today I will be discussing the theory systems model developed by Betty Newman. This presentation is for Trinity College of Nursing and Health Sciences, Nursing 402. Betty Newman was born in Lowell, Ohio in 1924 and began her educational career at the People's Hospital School in 1947 by pursuing a registered nurse diploma. She continued her education by earning her BSN and later her MSN from UCLA. Her interest in mental health led her to pursue a PhD in clinical psychology. Due to her contributions and great achievements, she earned two honorary doctorates from very prestigious schools later in her career. Betty Newman was talented and a very gifted individual that contributed greatly to the way we see nursing today. Her experience began as a community mental health nurse and later went on to lecturing at the university where she got her bachelor's and master's degrees. While she was working as a community health nursing instructor, she also published her first book, The Newman System Model, in 1982. Newman spent the rest of her career educating professors, students, and nurses through public speaking events and through her contributions to academia as an author. Here we have a quick summary of the main concepts that the system model represents. The client is seen as an open system that is subject to, to constant change based on his or her experiences, whether real or perceived. The systems model focuses on the way the client responds to their environment and how we as nursing students and future nurses can help reduce levels of stress and promote optimal client system wellness through proper interventions. Newman describes humans as having several lines of defense, all that which protect the core, the center of it all that makes us uniquely human, our strengths and weaknesses. The picture here demonstrates how there are several lines of defense before reaching the core, the most vital component of the system, that of which we are attempting to protect from stressors. Before reaching the core, we have the line of resistance, which can be recognized as our immune system. Typically, we use all preventative measures instead of solely relying on our immune system to protect us from illness. We wash our hands, cover our mouth and nose when sneezing, and stay healthy in other ways, such as eating nutritious foods and exercising to prevent our line of resistance or our immune system from fighting off illness on its own. Normal line of defense which is the middle ring that represents a person's normal or usual wellness of state. It is important to note that the normal line of defense is dynamic and unique to the individual due to individual experiences. The normal line of defense is influenced by stressors that arise from internal, external, or created environments and do not necessarily have to be imminent. It is composed of five structures, physiological, psychological, sociocultural, spiritual, and developmental. These five components can be affected in a unique manner, all which can break down the normal line of defense and penetrate into the core. Each component has its variable strengths and weaknesses, as mentioned before, and is unique to the individual. Therefore, one component does not necessarily have to be affected to the same degree as all of the other four. Following the normal line of defense is the flexible line of defense, which is also dependent on the individual's experiences, such as nutritious status, quality and quantity of stress, amount of sleep, and personal beliefs. This outermost boundary can be broken through by stressors and may invade the system, thus activating the line of resistance and causing a movement towards illness. As most things discussed, the degree of illness is dependent on several factors unique to the individual and resides on a wellness-illness continuum. Stressors are all around us and affect us all differently. They can be intrapersonal, meaning they occur within the person, such as infection, thoughts, and feelings. They can be interpersonal, which occur between individuals, such as role expectations, or they can be extra-personal, such as finance concerns or job responsibilities. Reconstitution is a term that describes the amount of energy that occurs within the individual in relation to the degree of 
the reaction to the stressor. Reconstitution begins following initiation of treatment. It may expand the normal line of defense beyond its previous level, stabilize the system at a lower level, or return it to a level that existed before. Whenever the lines of resistance are tried, more often than not, we get over and fight off the stressors causing our lines of defense to strengthen and therefore increase in diameter, furthering its, itself from the core. However, if the lines of resistance are not effective in resulting energy loss, can cause the death of the individual. Newman defined the main concern of nursing as preventing stress invasion in order to avoid the lines of defense from potentially being penetrated and activated. Levels of prevention each have specific calls, goals, all within the main goal of maintaining harmony within the client system. Primary prevention occurs before the system reacts to a stressor and it strengthens the person by preventing stress and reducing risk factors. This includes health promotion and maintenance of wellness. Secondary prevention aims to prevent damage to the central core by occurring after the system reacts to the stressor. Possible prevention interventions include health screening, which strengthens the internal lines of resistance by identifying stressors early and regaining optimal system stability to conserve energy. Tertiary prevention occurs after the system reacts to a stressor and includes treatment of the disease and aims to prevent further deterioration and maintain wellness. So what does this all mean? By applying Newman's theory of the systems model, we are encouraged to see clients in a holistic manner, each with unique circumstances. We are expected to help clients through the levels of prevention to maintain, strengthen, and bring back balance to the client system. We are encouraged to see ourselves as an active agent and possible, and the possible difference in helping a client adapt to their situation and reduce their stressors. Here is an example of how Newman's theory is applied to a clinical situation. David is a 71-year-old male with a BMI of 37 and a history of hypertension. David eats fast food and smokes every day ever since his wife passed away. It is obvious that David is not a healthy individual and is at risk for many illnesses, especially coronary artery, artery disease. We can see that David's first line of defense is disrupted due to his bad habits. If these stressors disrupt David's line of de lines of defense, David will start showing signs and symptoms of coronary artery disease. If these risk factors are recognized and acknowledged, coronary artery disease may be prevented or at least minimized. This is where the nurse's role becomes critical with proper interventions to prevent further stress and protect and strengthen his lines of defense through education, smoking cessation, exercise, dietary habits, and grief support. Here we conclude with Bendy Newman recognized as the founder of the systems theory, which focuses on the client's response to stressors and how these stressors can affect our lines of defense. The first line of defense is the flexible line of defense, which protects a normal line of defense, that of which protects the core. These lines of defense are interrelated and are unique to each individual based on a variety of factors. As nurses, we have primary, secondary, and tertiary prevention strategies available to bring back harmony to the client system. Here are two discussion questions. One, describe a time when you or someone you know experienced one or more stressors that caused you or them to show signs and symptoms of illness. Describe what happened by applying Newman's theory using the following terms. Normal line of defense, flexible line of defense, reconstitution, core, and what preventative strategies or interventions did you use? Two, explain how you use how you as a student nurse can help a patient strengthen their lines of defense. Give examples using all three preventative strategies and how you would evaluate its effectiveness on the client. References